Welcome and thank you for standing by. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. There will be opportunities to ask questions during today's call. To ask a question at that time, please press star then 1. Today's conference is being recorded. If you do have any objections, you may wish to disconnect at this time. I'll now turn the meeting over to Ms. Linda Abruzzisi. Ma'am, you may begin. Thank you, and a good afternoon for those of you joining on the East Coast, and um, also good afternoon for you, those of you joining on the West Coast. Uh, thank you very much for joining us for our webinar on the U.S.-Canada Regulatory Cooperation Council Small Business Lens. My name is Linda Abrazizi, and I'm a Senior International Trade Specialist for the Global Knowledge Center at the Department of Commerce, and this webinar is being brought to you in cooperation by the U.S. Commercial Service um, and the Market Access and Compliance Offices, as well as Small Business Administration and uh, Business USA. Um, in a moment, I'll turn this presentation over to uh, Timothy Lord, who is the Canada Desk Officer for the North and Central America and the Caribbean Office. Um, also joining me today is um, Justin Hatmaker, who is the Social Media Lead from BusinessUSA.gov. Uh, uh, and also I have Sarah Bresselin, who is Assistant Chief Counsel of the Small Business Administration. These will be our main speakers today, and they will go over um, these opportunities um, that exist for U.S. companies um, for Canada. But before I begin, I just would like to go over a few housekeeping details um, so that you get the most benefit from today's webinar. During this webinar, you'll be able to hear this presentation via your telephone and view it simultaneously via your computer. So if you're not hooked up to both, please take a moment to do this. If you're experiencing any technical difficulties, please press star zero anytime during this presentation. Now, during this webinar, we will be taking voice and written questions. Now, to ask a voice question, please press star one on your telephone. We do invite you to type in questions on your screen as they occur to you during this presentation. On the upper left-hand side, there is an icon on the top of the page with the letters Q&A, which stands for questions and answers. When you click on this icon, you can click and type in your question any time during this presentation. What we will do is we will compile all these questions and present as many as time allows during this webinar. And any type questions which are not answered during this webinar due to time constraints, we will try to get back to you via an email after the webinar. And just as a reminder, for those of you who just joined us, you can still log in on the Internet as well as the telephone. And um, also, we do have um, and we'll have a copy of the PowerPoint presentation slides for you after the webinar, and we will have this recorded so we can also provide you a recording of this webinar. But so now I'd like to introduce uh, live online uh, the Canada, Canada Desk Officer for the Office of North and Central America and the Caribbean, uh, Timothy Lord. Thank you, Timmy, Tim, for joining us. Thanks very much, Linda. So uh, I'd also like to uh, thank everyone for being here, and uh, I'm really excited to be a part of this webinar. So, um, you know, today, as you know, we're going to be learning about uh, the RCC and the Small Business Lens. Uh, so this is going to include a uh, discussion of business.usa.gov, and there's also going to be a special emphasis on rulemakings and uh, the regulations that result from rulemakings. So we hope that you know you're going to you're going to learn a lot of things from this, and uh, we also hope that you know we can find out some things from you on how to better help serve you. And we also hope that maybe you can you know feel empowered um, knowing that you know you can influence the process and. Uh, and how regulations come about so that, you know, they don't uh, unduly harm your business. So just for a little bit of background on the RCC, um, so it was announced by uh, Prime Minister Harper and uh, President Obama back in 2011, and uh, it was basically created by the governments of the U.S. and Canada um, you know, with an eye on aligning regulations in certain areas and uh, creating platforms for communication between regulatory agencies on both sides to make sure that when uh, regulations are being crafted in the future, um, that they're, you know, sort of aligned from the get-go so that, you know, conflict isn't automatically built into a regulation as it's made. Uh, and really the, the whole rationale for this is that 
where there's alignment, it's going to promote, you know, commerce uh, between the U.S. and Canada simply because it's, you know, easier to trade across the border. So to just give a, a little bit more of a breakdown here, so the RCC is composed of 29 initiatives, we call them, which are under, you know, four kind of key areas or sectors. So there's agriculture and food, health and consumer products, transportation, the environment, and then we've got two kind of cross-cutting, cross-sectoral initiatives, nanotechnology and the small business lens, which is, uh, which is what we are. So you can, you can find out really anything you want to about the RCC, um, you know, including, you know, a, a lot more detailed uh, sort of history of it, kind of its foundational documents. Um, you can get things like uh, updates that, you know, related to the RCC, information on the different initiatives, who leads the different working groups, you know, really everything RCC that you'd want to know, um, you can get from trade.gov backslash RCC. Um, that's actually a site. Um, hosted by the Department of Commerce, which is, which is where I am. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm fairly familiar with it and also kind of gives you some contact information in case, you know, you should ever have some, some questions for me or any of the other uh, working group leads. So the RCC, um, you know, as you know, it's, uh, or as you've seen, it's, it's been in existence since 2011. So. You know, it's it's fairly new, but we've we've still definitely had some good concrete accomplishments. So, um, that there's uh, a couple of the big ones was that there was an agreement on uh, vehicle safety standards related to uh, shoulder belts in the rear center seat, um, which is you know somewhat of a big deal in the automotive industry, being that you know it's uh, it's such a huge component of the uh, you know uh, commerce between the U.S. and Canada, especially on the northern border, um, and. Uh, there's also, uh, you know, FDA and Health Canada's first uh, simultaneous review and approval of a veterinary drug, which, um, you know, has fairly uh, big implications for uh, things like, you know, the mutual recognition of, of, you know, basically regulatory practices when it comes to medicines um, and, you know, just even the sharing of data. So that kind of brings us to the small business lens which is basically, you know, I'll just kind of read out the purpose here and then, you know, give it in, in plain English. But, you know, the, the set, you know, quoted purpose is uh, to reduce the regulatory burden on small businesses by developing tools and provisions that better integrate small business considerations in the design of regulations. So, you know, what does that mean? Basically, we just want to make sure that when, you know, regulations are being designed on, uh, on both sides of the border, um, you know, we want to make sure that they're, you know, not unduly burdensome to you and your business. So, you know, part of that is we want to be able to get out these informations about, um, you know, rulemakings, proposed rulemakings, um, you know, proposed regulations, basically, uh, so that you can, you know, find out about these things. Um, and, you know, more importantly, we want to get your feedback to know, you know, what is it about this proposed regulation that might harm your business? What, what is something that you would want us to know about this? So that's really, you know, what the what the small business lens is all about. So, the work plan of the uh, the small business lens, and this goes for the work plan of of all the different uh, 29 initiatives under the RCC. Um, it's uh, carved up into various uh, deliverables based on uh, certain units of time. So deliverables meaning just basically goals that we have uh, for ourselves for for things that we want to get out there. Um, so the, you know, looking at the three to six month uh, deliverables, which are, you know, kind of the first set, uh, you know, we just want to, you know, make sure that, uh, you know, related to the small business lens that each side is, is very familiar with what's going on. So um, Canada uh, has published the small business lens, which is, um, you know, I, I should note that there's, uh, that there's a bit of a difference in when we're talking about the small business lens and the Canadian perspective, uh, it's actually something that was uh, put out by the Canadian government as a uh, as a tool that you know makes them take into account the the impacts the proposed regulations might have on on small businesses. Um, so it's obviously very similar to the small business lens sort of um, you know collaborative um, you know exercise between the U.S. and Canada and the RCC. 
but it's, you know, that collaborative exercise is basically taking its name from this new tool that the Canadian government is using specifically um, with Canadians in, um, you know, sort of formulating its own regulations. So I just wanted to uh, get that out there first, uh, you know, just for, as, a, uh, as a clarification. So, you know, in this three to six months, um, you know, besides the, uh, you know, the Canadians just kind of getting out there, the small business lens, um, you know, it, it's also just basically entailing on both sides, uh, you know, the U.S. and Canada becoming familiar with what each side does uh, when it comes to, you know, letting stakeholders, uh, particularly small businesses, know about uh, rulemakings, what goes into, you know, developing regulations. So for the next, um, you know, so for the next sort of step in the three to six months deliverables, um, you know, as I was saying before, the uh, the U.S. and Canada are going to, um, you know, meet with each other, and uh, you know, the officials are, are kind of, uh, you know, going to explain what each side does. Um, so the Canadians briefed U.S. officials on the small business lens, and uh, the U.S. officials uh, briefed Canadian officials on the Regulatory Flexibility Act which is something uh, in the U.S. that's similar to the Canadian small business lens, which uh, just requires federal agencies to uh, analyze the impact of proposed regulations on small firms. Um, and we also uh, discussed the President's uh, January 18, 2011 memo on uh, regulatory flexibility, uh, small business, and job creation, which uh, just emphasizes that uh, federal agencies, you know, um, need to justify their decisions not to provide flexibility uh, for small businesses when it comes to, to making regulations. And uh, as I said at the beginning, um, you know, we're going to be talking about business.usa.gov, which uh, I'm going to hand over to uh, Justin Hatmaker here in, in just a little bit. But, uh, you know, that's, that's also part of, uh, you know, the deliverables in this first uh, tranche here was um, that business.usa.gov is, is going to be adding, you know, new features and content, um, you know, which it has done, and it's, it's really cool. So um, I look forward to uh, Justin talking about that here in, in just a few seconds. Um, for kind of the next set of deliverables, so, uh, you know, the Canadian U.S. officials met, uh, you know, once before to kind of discuss the different tools that, that each side has and is developing. Um, and, you know, a, again, they sort of met as, as a continuation, sort of as a, a progress update. And that brings us to the deliverables at uh, 12 to 18 months. So, which is, you know, that's that's currently where we are. So. This, this sort of brings us to why we're having the webinar, because we're wanting to identify new and innovative ways to help small businesses find rulemakings with international impacts uh, and to engage in the rulemaking process. So, you know, part of the, the reason for this webinar is that, you know, not only do we want to convey to you how you can find out this information, but more importantly, we want to find out, you know, how we can, how we can better serve you, um, you know, to get you this information. So. Um, you know, that's, you know, you're obviously going to be helping us in, in, you know, figuring out these sort of new and, and cool ways to, uh, to help you get this information. So, you know, I, I'm going to highlight here more than at any other place that, uh, you know, you the, you the stakeholders, the small businesses are really, you know, the crucial part of this work plan. So, um, you know, I'm especially glad that, uh, that those of you who could make it were able to, uh, to uh, attend this webinar today. So beyond 18 months, while, while we still are in the uh, 12 to 18 month phase technically, um, you know, we, we still have been, you know, kind of moving forward. So at this current juncture, it's, it's basically time for us to figure out, um, you know, where we're going and, you know, how we're going to be using uh, the various kind of tools that we've been coming up with to, you know, create this, you know, or make sure that there's kind of this true alignment in the future. Uh, between the U.S. and Canada. So, um, you know, more importantly, you know, obviously is uh, how can we make sure that businesses on, on both sides of the border are affected in uh, the smallest way possible. So 
So before I uh, kind of pass the football off to Justin here, um, we just got a little bit of a poll, which I think uh, Linda will be will be helping us uh, out with here. So um, basically, we we just want to ask you: so how do you find out about uh, proposed rulemakings and rulemaking? So how do you you know find out about you know regulations when they're in the very beginning stage of just kind of being bandied about when they're in the rulemaking stage? Um, you know, how do you find out about them? So uh, the first you know, A is, you know, you find out about them from checking sites like regulations.gov, reginfo.gov, or the Federal Register, all of which are going to be um, discussed later, uh, in case you're wondering. Or, uh, you know, B, you find them from, you know, say maybe your local trade organization or an industry group. Or C, you, you know, you don't find out about rulemakings or proposed rulemakings until after they become regulations, until, you know, it's, it's too late, so, uh, so to speak. So, you know, I'm just going to give you, uh, I guess, a little bit of time to uh, to answer that. And uh, I think while you are, I don't know, Linda, should I just pass it on to uh, to Justin? Yeah, I mean, the polls are open, so we'll give you a couple of minutes to just choose your answer on your screen, and then we'll close it in a couple of minutes. And then, yes, um, Justin can, can begin his presentation if you'd like. Okay, so I just closed the polls right now, and um, we can begin with uh, Justin. But it looks like 37% find out about, or 50% find out more about proposed rulemakings through the trade organizations or industry group, which is your highest, your highest percentage. Mm, interesting. Yeah, and um, yeah, and 37% they find out um, about proposed rulemaking. Through regulations.gov, reginfo.gov, or the Federal Register, and of course the least amount uh, or least uh, option that they find out about proposed rulemakings is um, until after they have become regulations. So thank you very much for your votes, and we'll turn it over to uh, Justin. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, uh, hopefully everyone can hear me. Uh, well, uh, thank you uh, all for having me today. I will try to be. Um, brief today, uh, but I do want to get a little bit into um, kind of the a little background on uh, Business USA uh, as well as kind of um, what our kind of um, main goal is, uh, what we try to accomplish, uh, how our site works, and some of the new things um, that we've been working on. So uh, for those of you that aren't uh, aware of the history uh, of Business USA, uh, a little less than uh, two years ago, uh, the President announced uh, formation of a uh, no wrong door approach uh, for um, business owners and those uh, entrepreneurs looking to start a business um, to um, have easier access to government programs that help business development uh, and exporting. Uh, there are, I don't even know how many um, federal government uh, agencies that have programs uh, that uh, help people uh, that are starting a business or uh, looking to expand their business, um, find um, financing, uh, find training programs, um, find uh, other resources that uh, can help them uh, improve their businesses. Um, I like to use uh, an example from uh, where I'm originally from in the government with the Department of Agriculture. Uh, most people don't know that uh, the Department of Agriculture has uh, programs that help um, individuals start businesses uh, in rural parts of the country. Uh, and since most folks don't know about that, they wouldn't necessarily know to go to the USDA website uh, when they're trying to find financing for their business. So uh, what we've created uh, in a very short uh, turnaround, I think uh, we first uh, launched uh, the first version of the site in February of uh, 2012, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we've come a long way since. But uh, we've created uh, basically a portal for um, uh, for folks to go to uh, instead of going to every different government agency's website to find information about programs that can help them. Uh, they could go to Business USA and try to hone in on uh, a variety of programs uh, that might fit their needs. Uh, so as you can see on this slide, it's uh, just a screenshot of our homepage right now. Uh, back when it started, it looked a lot different. Uh, but um, what we have is our uh, basic jumping off point uh, with Business USA. Uh, are these 10, uh, well, actually now it's 12, uh, 
tiles uh, that are subject-based. Uh, they are meant to walk users through a process of uh, narrowing down what it is they're looking for. So, uh, for example, the uh, upper leftmost tile uh, is start a business. Uh, if you're looking to start a business and you need uh, either help uh, with uh, finding financing or getting information about regulations or if you're looking for uh, events uh, that are being put on uh, that uh, will help you uh, start your business, uh, you would go through there. And what these tiles will do is uh, have the user um, answer a series of questions, basically. Um, they'll, you know, uh, input their zip code uh, to say where they are, which will help them uh, hone in on uh, local resources. Uh, it'll ask them what kind of, uh, what type of industry uh, they're looking to start a business in. Um, if they are maybe a minority or women, uh, a woman business owner, things like that that will help them drill down to uh, hopefully a final result of uh, a number of different programs uh, that could help them um, accomplish what they're looking to do. Uh, we have a variety of uh, other tiles here uh, that help with exporting, uh, financing specifically. Uh, we've got disaster assistance. We've got a tile that is meant to help um, keep business owners understand the new health care laws. Uh, veterans resources, uh, all these different uh, subject-based tiles that will take users through uh, the process of narrowing it down, uh, like I said, to find those uh, government programs that might help them. There are a couple other things uh, on our site um, that are meant to help users. Uh, you can enter your zip code and just find everything that's going on uh, near you. Uh, you can browse events uh, directly and just see uh, if there are training sessions or seminars happening uh, near you. Uh, you can also access our knowledge base, uh, ask a question. Um, what else? There's uh, a link um, to 1-800-FED-INFO, which is a phone number they can call uh, to uh, get answers over the phone if they're not finding what they need uh, in the website. So that's basically uh, Business USA uh, in a nutshell. Uh, some of the new things uh, we've got going on, we actually just uh, released a new for our site, we added two new subject-based tiles, the Help with Hiring Employees uh, and Invest in the USA tiles. These are uh, two tiles that are meant to uh, help uh, employers uh, with their hiring needs, uh, finding training programs, uh, learning how to uh, retain employees and, uh, you know, find better employees. Uh, and then Invest in USA is a tile that will help um, businesses uh, invest in USA, uh, whether foreign or domestic. Um, bringing uh, their operations to the USA. Uh, we've also uh, added some improvements to a couple of our other tiles, uh, the Veterans Disaster Assistance uh, and Expand Exporting tiles were just improved to add better filters. So when people want to uh, expand their exporting operations, uh, there's a better set of questions uh, that will help them drill down to what they're looking for. And then in the Start a Business uh, tile, we added uh, a new size up tool, which uh, just uh, fits right in with the questions that were already uh, being answered in that tile, but it allows uh, individuals to compare other businesses uh, in the area that they're looking to start theirs. So if you're looking to start, uh, you know, a machine shop uh, in your neighborhood, you can see other machine shops that already exist. You can see, um, you know, how they do. Uh, you can find out what your suppliers are, things like that. Uh, other things um, we've recently, uh, I would say in the past couple months introduced, we've introduced uh, a site tour, so if you don't know anything about Business USA, uh, it'll walk you through kind of what we're all about. Uh, you can, um, uh, we've, uh, enhancements to the start of business, find opportunities, access financing, and begin exporting tiles. Uh, these are all uh, the changes that I talked about, like with uh, the veterans and disaster assistance. We added uh, new filters and uh, better ways for them to find information. Uh, we've added a persistent frame, which basically uh, because Business USA just compiles um, information from other government websites, uh, when you find a program with, let's say, uh, the Small Business Administration, uh, you will eventually end up uh, at the Small Business Administration website. Uh, but what we wanted to be able to do is provide uh, users a way to get back to Business USA if that's not exactly what they're looking for. So when you do go to that external website, it takes a frame uh, with you so you can go right back uh, to Business USA when you're done. Uh, and then uh, we've added those, like I said, the question, feedback, uh, and knowledge base uh, options on the side. Uh, we've uh, recently, um, I guess I'll, you know, toot my own horn on this one, uh, increased our social media presence. 
Uh, we are very active uh, on Twitter. Uh, I encourage everyone to follow us. We are uh, BizUSA uh, on Twitter. Uh, we've recently uh, got into LinkedIn uh, as well, uh, which is a bit of a less active uh, platform for us, but we're trying to increase our presence there. Uh, we're also uh, starting to ramp up our um, email uh, activity, uh, newsletters and announcements, uh, things like that, and uh, same thing with our blog. Um, we have a blog right now that kind of takes our partner agencies and uh, takes their blog posts and um, advertises them, uh, but we're trying to produce uh, original blog posts as well. So that's all I have prepared for you. I don't know if, there, if we want to do questions later or if we're doing questions now, but um, that's all I've got. Okay, we have our next speaker, which is Sarah. Yes, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you, Linda. Uh, I'm delighted to be here speaking this afternoon. Um, also, I'd like to thank everybody that's uh, on the phone and on the web with us. Uh, I work for the Small Business Administration in the Office of Advocacy. Uh, I'm, uh, hey there, sorry to, sorry to interrupt, but is, is anyone else having trouble hearing Sarah, or is that just me? No, Sarah, if you could just speak up a little bit more, that would be great. Okay, is this better? Can you hear yeah, me better now? Much better. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry about that. Um, I work with the Office of Advocacy, and we're an independent office within the federal government that advances the views and concerns of small businesses before Congress, the White House, and the our, and our you know, federal government partners. Um, Tim gave a really good explanation about the current phase that we're in right now, which is the 12 to 18 month uh, deliverables. Uh, so I'm going to sk skip to the next screen. Um, so for the impl implementation of this phase, uh, we are reaching out to small businesses in, in webinars and we're going and conducting meetings and stakeholder sessions uh, to find better ways to involve uh, small businesses in the rulemaking process. So when we're talking about the rulemaking process, we really need the stage where small businesses can have the most impact. And this is because this is, you know, the time when the agency is actually deciding what the content of the regulations are going to be. So this is pre-regulation. This is when you can you know, submit comments and have a, have a real impact. Um, and so as Tim did mention, we are specifically looking at ways that small businesses can become aware of uh, rulemakings with international impacts. So those would be probably most interesting to you if they're going to affect your trade with other com countries. And then also find new ways for small businesses to engage in the rulemaking process. And so, you know, I'm really interesting to see your poll. A lot of you get your information from your trade associations. That's certainly um, a lot of my experience with working with a lot of small businesses is, uh, is through the trade associations. Uh, but it's also great to hear directly from the small businesses. Uh, so what is an uh, international impact? So uh, this is going to be uh, a rulemaking that will affect international trade and investment or also a rulemaking uh, that will affect the interest of uh, one of the United States' international trading partners. So I had three um, examples at the bottom of the slide, and I'm going to take a look at the formaldehyde emission standards for composite wood products. So this was actually just published by the Environmental Protection Agency on Monday. There is currently an open comment period until August 9th. In this rulemaking, EPA is setting new standards, uh, emission standards for composite wood products that are being manufactured, imported, and sold in the United States. So this will have an, an effect on international trade because any manufacturer in the world who wants to export panels or final good or final goods, sorry, finished goods containing composite wood products to the United States must comply with these uh, must comply with these standards and also be certified by a third party. Um, just for a second example, if we look at the foreign supplier verification program, uh, this is a uh, this is a rulemaking that's actually currently under review, so it's not yet published, but will be published in, in near future. And this is um, from the Department of Homeland, or sorry, Health and Human Services and the Food and Drug Administration. And this is actually requires that each importer have a foreign supplier verification program that will provide assurances that the supplier produces food in compliance with U.S. standards. So this is uh, this is this is a good idea. We want to be importing food um, that are up to our standards. 
Uh, however, it might have impacts on our on our uh, foreign trading partners. Partners, it may increase the cost and administrative burdens on foreign companies that are ex exporting to the United States. So, moving to the next slide, um, ways that you can find rulemakings uh, on your own. So, besides looking. Um, or getting information from your trade association. If you look on the left side of the screen, at uh, uh, you can search reginfo.gov, and this is the website of the Office of Management and Budgets Office of Inter Information and Regulatory Affairs, and this is the office that reviews rulemakings that are economically significant. So any rulemaking that is going to have an impact of more than $100 million on the U.S. economy in a given year has to go out for public notice and comment. Um, so you can go onto this website and you can search uh, in this little box. You can uh, type in any industry or, or, um, or word that, you, that your business might be associated with and it will bring up all rulemakings that are currently under review. Um, if your rulemaking isn't, a, isn't economically significant, then you can search the unified agenda down here, and you would search that by agency. So if you know there's an agency that frequently pro promulgates regulations that would affect your business, so if you're working in chemicals uh, or maybe pesticides and the Environmental Protection Agency requires that pesticides are registered, then you can check the unified agenda for the Environmental Protection Agency to see if there are any upcoming or planned rulemakings related to uh, pesticides. So then if you go over to the right side of the screen, uh, this is the Federal Register, and this is where um, actually the rulemakings are published uh, for, and for, for your review. Um, and you can also search the Federal Register by citation, by agency, and by topic. And just um, this is the Federal Register from a couple of days ago, and you can say that there were 10 proposed rulemakings in that Federal Register that day. So just moving along to the next slide. Um, you can also get notified in several other ways by signing up to uh, email uh, list serves from many agencies. Uh, I'm talking a lot about the EPA because I work with the EPA a lot, um, but uh, I, I myself have signed up for a lot of the EPA email blasts, and the EPA has some great blasts. You can sign up um, with regard with the office that you'd be interested in, interested in, whether it's air, water, or waste. Um, and uh, if you look three bullet points down, this is this is a, a shameless plug for my own office, but we have regulatory alerts. We have 12 attorneys in my office that work with small businesses, and we put out um, alerts when there's an open comment period or, or anything that we think might be of interest to our small business stakeholders. So there are, there are a couple of ways, well actually there are many ways that small businesses can participate, and I would like to echo what Tim said in the beginning. It's really important um, that your voices are heard, and that's what my whole job is. <laughs> um, so uh, we have next week, the, we have an RCC stakeholder meeting um, that will be on June 20th, and in the morning it's a, there's a plenary session, there's going to be a stakeholder and a government panel, and in the afternoon there will actually be a chance for stakeholders to present before government officials who are currently working on the RCC. Um, about their issues and concerns, and most importantly, what what they want to see the RCC do going forward. So you can sign up um, if you would like to participate. Uh, it's, a, it's the website that Tim had at the beginning of the presentation, which is www.trade.gov forward slash RCC forward slash. And then on the right side, uh, you'll see you can also submit comments and uh, participate in public uh, public hearings and public comment sessions. Um, and this would be on the rulemaking side. Um, and it really does help improve federal regulations when small businesses participate because agencies often don't know how their rulemakings are going to impact small businesses until they hear from small businesses. So if you are interested in submitting comments, you can go to this website, regulations.gov. You can search this website in that search bar right there. 
um, using a keyword. For example, I, I typed in chicken, and I found several rulemakings um, that were taking comments, including a draft risk assessment on listeria in uh, retail delicatessens. <laughs> also, you can um, you can also see the rules that aren't uh, the rulemakings that aren't open for a comment period. Maybe the comment period is closed, but you can see you can see whatever what everyone else has commented on. You can still see all of the documents. And then it gives you a really good sense of, you know, what the agency might be doing. And then you can still you can still um, contact the agency um, and try to meet with the agency uh, even if you didn't have a chance to submit public comments during the comment um, uh, during this comment period. Um, and I think I think that's all I had and here's the contact information for the three of us. And um, just move uh, right on to the questions and comments. And and as Tim said, um, you know, this is part of this is part of our outreach for the small business lens. And we're really interested in knowing you know, how it would be easier for you to get information on rulemakings that are that would impact you. Um, and so you know, we you can go to um, reginfo.gov and the Federal Register and an agency's website and the email blast. But besides that, do you ha we'd be interested in knowing whether there are any other ways. Great. Thank you very much, Sarah. Now we'll go to our Q&A session. Once again, if you have a voice question, uh, please press star 1 and the operator will attend to you first. And if you do have a written question, please Please put in your written question on the upper left-hand side of your screen. There's um, letters with Q&A, and we will also look at those as well for questions. So once again, if you have a voice question, please press star 1, and I'll turn it over to the operator. Thank you. Please press star, then 1, if you do have a question at this time. One moment, please. Star one to ask your question. We're still waiting for the first audio question. And I just want to also um, to say that this is a great opportunity to ask a voice question because we have all of these speakers and experts right here at the same time. So they add a certain type of um, energy and expertise when you do it live like this. And I would highly recommend that you you um, ask a voice question because they're here and they have the time to answer your specific questions. And, you know, if you do think of a question later on, we can always get back to you. But I just want to make sure that you guys get the most value out of this webinar. So um, if you have a voice question, I would ask, I would ask it during this, during this time. We do have a question that comes from Roger Nasif. Your line is open. I just wanted to see that, uh, the slide before this, uh, the contact information. That was my first question. I have it right there for you. Oh, there it is. Okay. I had trouble connecting when we started, so I didn't know who was who. And okay, yeah, and we will have um, PowerPoint presentation slides from this webinar available to you, as well as the net replay and the recording. Okay. Can I ask another question? Sure, of course. Um, I manufacture heart monitors. EKG machines, and um, we're inspected regularly by FDA, and they have uh, um, stricter requirements than the uh, 1345, pretty much, that we've actually harmonized with, the latest version with FDA. Why do we have to get invest, um, inspected again um, before going into Canada by yet an, a different organization? And is that changing? You are a, uh, this is Sarah speaking, you are a U.S. company? Yes, I manufacture here in the U.S. Okay, and um, you uh, you had mentioned that um, some requirements had just been harmonized with some other requirements? Yeah, we, we're inspected by FDA, which is, <clears throat> excuse me, harmonized with 1345, the, the main uh, manufacturing, you know, inspection regime, kind of have everything in place here to track products, all that kind of thing. Um, the same exact uh, standard is used in Canada, but we have to get totally different inspectors to come in. They do not accept the FDA inspection of 1345. Okay. So my question is, is um, what um, does anyone have any information of when that's going to be harmonized instead of getting inspected for the same thing twice? I. It's just double payment each time. Mm -hmm. You know. Yes. Yeah, um, Sarah, you can. Uh, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there, Sarah. You can. You can go ahead. Well, I, 
I was just going to say that I think that's a really um, excellent example of a way where um, we can find alignment between Canada and the U.S. So while I don't have any information about that, that kind of inf that kind of information is important to us, and we can go back and uh, take this to the to the RCC and um, you know start looking at ways that you know we can find for these kind of alignments. But this is you know this is information that working in the government that we wouldn't know. So it's important to hear from small businesses about this. And if if you want to follow up with an email um, to mm -hmm. to any of us, well, you're welcome to send it to me or I, Tim might also be interested. Um, we that we would uh, we could follow up on your behalf. Yeah, please. Yeah, please do. Um, and that's that's something that I'd I'd really be eager to do to to do is is to uh, yeah just to kind of convey your your situation and and let um you know those at uh, OMB um sort of know what's what's going on um and hopefully you know this is something that we can you know use in discussions for kind of future um, iterations of the RCC and you know maybe you know who knows there could even be um, an initiative or a work plan related to uh, regulations um, for medical devices. So I think the more information we get from you, the better. All right. I, I'll send emails. Okay, great. And um, I, know, I know there's some harmonization going on. Uh, there's an attempt to do it, uh, but it's really, really slow moving. And I, I think they just get together, have a meeting once a year, and, yeah, we should do something, and then, but they don't do anything. <laughs> right. It's, it's a... Connection between Canada, United States, Australia, and I think Brazil. I think those are the four main players. It's, it's not with Europe yet, mm -hmm. which has the same standards, but they want. Uh, for some reason, it's all separated. I don't understand why we were inspected for the same thing multiple times. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from Sabina. Your line is open. Um, hello, this is Sabina. We are a U.S. corporation and work in the railroad industry. Uh, we have a situation that, uh, for example, being asked um, to do a product demonstration in Canada or just a um, one-day work assignment, the administrative hurdles for just a very short assignment, as I say, one day or a two-day for a demonstration, are quite elaborate work visa or even for a demonstration 102 waiver and having the employee uh, getting an ITIN number. Um, is there any initiative to ease that and allow, let's say, short-term assignments without major uh, requirements? I saw an initiative, a recommendation by the Canadian Chamber of Commerce but uh, that was not implemented in the 2013 budget. Yeah, I mean, there there certainly is um, a lot of a lot of talk between uh, the U.S. and Canada in, in making um, it easier for for business travelers to cross the border. Um, you know, there is uh, you know provisions in the NAFTA for for temporary entry of of certain professionals um, doing certain activities. I you know, in, in which case you, you know, you don't need a visa, but I, I take it that that's something that you've researched and your company is not able to, to take advantage of? Um, for a product demonstration, I believe we don't need a visa, but still there is the 102 waiver requirement and um, requirement for the uh, U.S. employees to get a tax number. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It seems, still seems to be the case, and um, there is some waiting time associated with that, which delays when um, our um, contact with the Canadian company is frustrating for our Canadian potential customers that they have to wait mm -hmm. um, for us to take action. Yeah, and that's yeah, it, yeah. The the facilitation of, of cross border trade and travel is a is a big part of this, and I don't know how familiar you are, you are with the with the U.S. Canada Beyond the Border initiative, but this, um, you know, it, it talks much more about things like you know customs facilitation and uh, and things like that. So I'd be happy to um, to get you some some information about that, uh, you know, after um, after the the webinar here. But uh, you know, that is that is something that you know in the in the RCC context, uh, you know. 
that could be that's something that could be addressed, but you know, it's really when it comes to you know border crossings and things like that that are not necessarily like regulation uh, specific. Um, that's something that's really um, you know would probably be more specific to the Beyond the Border initiative, but it's still very applicable to what you're talking about. So I'd like to get you that information. I would appreciate that. Thank you. Sure. Once again, if you do have an audio question, please press star then one. While we're waiting for another um, voice question, I do have a written question here from Lewis Gregg. And the question is, current legislation will invoke a burden on transporters and shipper suppliers when they implement the legislation requiring formal customs entries for vessels returning to the United States empty but not purged. The argument is, is this argument for safety? Any hazardous material should be duly marked with the hazard. This will, um, will this be somewhat of um, a burden to all involved, including CBP, when, um, when this is going on, I guess? Well, I can, I can say that, you know, that's, that that is, is not my, area of expertise, um, but uh, what I can say is that the small business lens, you know, its sort of ultimate intent is that regulators on the U.S. and the Canadian side, um, you know, not only are, are we kind of going through these beginning stages where we want to get the information out to small businesses about, you know, regulations that could impact them and also get, you know, information from them. But we also want to open up channels between ourselves um, in the U.S. and Canada so that, you know, when we're, um, you know, putting out regulations that, you know, while we're taking into account, you know, how they, how they would impact our own small businesses, uh, we also kind of take into account what is, um, you know, an applicable regulation in Canada so that if we're slightly tweaking a particular regulation, um, that it's, it's not different than what it is in Canada so that we're not, you know, putting – Putting something um, out there from the get-go that's that's um, you know misaligned, you know, because ideally, if we've got these good you know channels of communication between ourselves and the Canadian regulators, we can say, well, you know, we're being sensitive to the needs of our small businesses, and at the same time, we're also making sure that this regulation isn't completely inconsistent with Canada, so that you know there's going to be a hold up at the border. So you know, I think that if the small business lens um, you know, I think when it gets more ingrained, um, you know, the communication between regulators, I would think that the, um, you know, that the problem that this gentleman was uh, was talking about would, would you know, happen, um, you know, far less frequently. Thank you very much, Tim. Sure. I show no audio questions. Okay. Um, I'm still looking for some written questions. I don't see any more as well, so... If there are no more audio or voice questions, we'll conclude this webinar. Um, I just would like everyone to please note once again uh, the contact information that's on your screen. If you have questions that come to you after this webinar, please note the contact information and um, you will be able to have your voices heard and your questions answered. Also, I just wanted to let everyone know um, you can find a lot of information about this topic and also about other webinars and trade events and exporting terminology on uh, the website www.export.gov. And as I've learned today, there's also www.export.gov forward slash RCC for more information on that topic. So please check out that website. I would like to thank our main speakers for today. Thank you, Tim and Justin, as well as Sarah. I appreciate your